this is a bunch of doctors and probably health people who don't study physics making a mistake on physics 100 years ago and repeating it for 100 years. Because the reason why distance, which is known for centuries, works to reduce airborne transmission is not gravity, it's dilution. It basically, this person is exhaling an invisible smoke. In this situation, this person is going to inhale a lot more. In this case, a lot less. But the real picture is this one. The aerosols are most concentrated in the exhalation of the infected person. And we have two types of airborne transmission, transmission in close proximity, sometimes people call it short range, and transmission in a shared room. And I think since then, it's much clearer that airborne is the only important form of transmission of COVID. This is the, the thinking as a function of history of how many of these epidemic diseases, when a lot of people get you know, tuberculosis or cholera or, or malaria, how many of those are going through the air? And historically, since Hippocrates, since the Greeks, it was thought that most of them were going through the air. This was the miasma theory and its variants. And, and really, that was the dominant theory until 1850, when John Snow shows no cholera is really the water, and Ignaz Semmelweis shows that puerperal fever is really through the hands, and malaria, malaria was thought to be bad air, uh, is shown to go through mosquitoes. So then there is a period of debate around 1900, you know, are there diseases that really go through the air? And then um, Charles Chaping is an American epidemiologist, and he says, this airborne thing, this was a superstition. This really is not true. And they really thought that no, no important disease was airborne. So I think that the period since then we qualified as resistance to airborne. You know, So it's only admitted if you really cannot deny it. And that's what happened with tuberculosis and later with measles and chickenpox. It just became so clear that it couldn't be denied. And that's what's happening with COVID-19, but, but we face again an extraordinary resistance when you will not find papers like the one I showed you before saying, this is the evidence in favor of droplets or in favor of surfaces, because there isn't any. Large droplet transmission has never been <laughs> demonstrated for any disease, not just for COVID, for any disease. Yet WHO told us immediately that, that they knew 